Sim. Ok. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is my first time ever giving a talk in English in North America. So keep that in mind as we go further. And please be kind with my English and working on it and hard. So, if you don't understand something, just raise your hand. Say, eh, excuse me, but your English is not so good. So, I would like to share with you uh, uh, a love story. Yes, it's not, a, it's not a movie, but it's a love story. No, that's with my family, of course, but my wife and my two kids. They are in Bolivia right now. But a love story between me and the Drupal community. Since 2009, I began to work with Drupal. And you know, at the beginning, it's not always easy to, to work with Drupal because we don't have so much documentation at this time. But when I met the community, this has changed my life. Uh, if I am who I am today, it's thanks to the community. If I have a decent job and a decent life, it's thanks to the community. If I, if I can travel all around the world, it's thanks to the community. So really, the community changed uh, my life. And during the last 10 years, I co-organized a lot of Drupal events all around South America and uh, Belgium, because I come from Belgium. So, but after 10 years, I said, I would like to do something more than just Drupal events, just camps, just summits or, or meetups. So I decided to do something different, and that's why I did videodrupal.org. So why? Because I see a lot of people looking for Drupal resources, and it's always hard to find that. They go to YouTube and so on, and it's very difficult to find a good video. So I said, how is that possible if we have so many good Drupal videos? How can we make them more accessible? So what I decide is to retrieve all those videos from YouTube and to place it on the just one website to make them more accessible, to ca categorize them, and so on. So we can work on that uh, videos and perhaps uh, categorize them or for learning, for uh, professional pur purposes, or, and so on. But I had a problem. I had a problem with YouTube and Google. Why? Because people use those tools every day. So when they are going to another website, they said, I want it the same as I can find in Google or YouTube. So what kind of feature do you think the people are looking when they are going to a new website? What kind of feature from Google or YouTube do you think they are going to, to look for? Search. Search, OK. What else? But what kind of search? Because we can make a search, but what kind of search are, are they looking for? Because I can just uh, search for something and have a list. Is that is that enough? Autocomplete. Perhaps autocomplete, yes. Filter. Filter, very good. What else? Sorting. Sorting. <coughs> Faces? No? Well, that's so when you make a website, think that, uh, have that in mind because the people is like that. No, they used to have a website like Google or YouTube. What other feature are they waiting for? Like in YouTube and Google. Recommendation. Recommendation, yes. Something more? What is recommendation? It's kind of similar, yeah. like people. Exactly. Uh, what did you say? Related. Related content. But really related. Not just a little bit, like we do normally. We do 
we related content by tags or something like that, it's not enough. So Google and YouTube can relate content in another way. In fact, they use information retrieval uh, system. So when people is going to your website and want to read other articles or and so on, they are reading for really related content, not something similar that we, we don't know how. And what's the third one they are looking for? Or they are expecting, perhaps? Quality? Yeah, something related with that. How is Google when we, if you search for something? Personalization. Yes, but something... Speed fast. Yes, fast speed. They are waiting for that. It has to be fast. So when you propose a website and it's not fast, it hasn't uh, an advent, ad, advanced search or a good related content, people say, wow, what is that? Because they used to use all the kind of website like Google and uh, YouTube. So I said, OK, I'm going to, to make video Drupal. But people are expecting something like YouTube and Google. OK, it's for the community. Yes, but if someone new wants to know Drupal and he goes to the community website, he's going to say, if it's low, or yes, it's Drupal. Or if he can search very well, he said, OK, that's Drupal. No, I think that when we do something for the community, we should do it the same way as we are going to do for our clients and give the best of the market. So we need to have a fast website, we need to have an advanced search tool, and we need precise related content. So how can we do that with Drupal 8? The best fit is Apache Solar. That's the best one. So today, what are we going to see? We are going to see how we can use Apache Solar as a few backend for performance, for, for having a fast website. And we are also going to see how can we use Apache Solar to get some related content. Okay, so when we have performance, when we have advanced search and related content, I think we can have happy clients. So solar, it's one of the best fits. We're going to, to speak a little bit about that. Okay, so who I am? My name is Karim Bujema. I come from Belgium, uh, but I live in Bolivia. So. And uh, I am a Drupal developer since 10 years now. I'm working mainly for the media industry as a Drupal freelancer. And you know, the, the media industry is everything fast. Fast right now. Not, not in five minutes, right now. So you have a lot of journalists working on content, making content all the time. And you have also a lot of Readers, but I say, I say a lot of, not just 100 or 1,000. We have 2,000 readers per second. So when we make a solution in the media industry, this solution has to be fast, but for a lot of people. So it's, it's, it's a very demanding uh, industry. And I'm also a Drupal community ambassador in South America and Belgium. I hope so here in uh, Montreal. And that my uh, academic background is a little bit strange because I, I'm coming from the business administration first in the Catholic University of louvain in Belgium. And then I made my master in uh, information management. A big thank you to my three mentors because we say that at the, at the end of the session, but I prefer to say that at the beginning. The, my three mentors, Jeff uh, Gerling, if you want to know something about solar, he's the guy. He has a lot of very good videos on uh, this uh, blog, really. So check, uh, check for that. A, a, a big thank you to Joaquin Bravo. It's one of the best 
uh, Drupal developer in South America is always uh, helping me. And also to Carla Grisno, is the vice president of uh, Drupal Agency in Washington. And she's always uh, helping me when I have some trouble with English and so on. I said, uh, could you just check that a little bit? So, yes, of course, she does. Another big, big thank you to Platform Message because that's, that company is hosting Video Drupal for free. So, interesting. And another big thank you to Evolving Web for having me during the month of uh, June in their office because I travel a lot. So I'm uh, the month of June in their office. And if you are looking for uh, a work, uh, a Drupal uh, position in Montreal, I really recommend this company because food is great. We, you, you, you can play. Uh, you have a nice uh, colleagues, uh, have fun, and so on. So I know that they are hiring uh, Drupal developers, so have a look. So a quick uh, survey, who is uh, using Search API? OK, yeah, yeah, OK. And who is using Apache Solar with Search API? <laughs> OK. And who is using Apache Solar as a view backend without Search? Okay, we're well, going to learn a lot of, of things today. Okay, so let's make a, a brief tour of Video Drupal of this website. So, okay, one of the main uh, features is searching, of course, and we said, let's say I'm going to search for Gatsby. Who said autocomplete? No? <laughs> autocomplete, yeah, because it's like that. Uh -huh. I, we need it. So, oh, fast. Yes, fast. I, I'm not going to wait that uh, the database and so on. We're going to see how it's so fast. And then we, uh, you spoke about uh, sorting, isn't it? So we can sort by most watched or by uh, most liked, for example. So, and we can also f uh, filter by year, but I can also filter by tags. So uh, let's see, for example, Gatsby. And I can also filter by channel. So for example, the channel of Evolving Web. And I can also uh, filter by uh, some plates, for example, from the back camp. So, that's what the user are expecting. It has to work like that, fast, with fast things, with uh, an advanced uh, search uh, tool. But when we go to a video, of course, we can see the video. Uh, we can see the channel uh, of uh, this video. I can see the playlist, if this video is from a playlist. But what we said, we have related content. So this video is about uh, the, the, uh, the coupling uh, Drupal with Gatsby. So I'm waiting more video about Gatsby. And that's what we have. Gatsby and React, Gatsby and Drupal, Gatsby and, and so on, and so on, and so on. So it, it not depends on the tags of the video. It depends on the description and on the title of the video. So. It, the, um, the people or the, the editor who is going to upload the video just make the right title and the description and you can forget about tags. Okay? If they want to make the, to, to add tags, no problem. But the system is not only based on tags. The system is based on title, description and tags and try to find the notes that are the more similar. That's what we are going to see uh, today. On the other hand, in the <coughs> home page, we can have the latest uh, Drupal video, of course, and the most, the most watched Drupal videos uh, since three months, six months, this year, and so on, and so on. And we can see what are the best Drupal channels 
uh, by likes, by subscribers, by uh, views. And I think one of the <coughs> most interesting things for you is that we can have access to the playlist. And for example, I can have access to all the Drupal count uh, playlist and to see all the, la the latest uh, Drupal camp like Twin City, uh, Flyover, Kiev, and, and so on and so on. So there you can find all the videos from all the Drupal camps in the last uh, three years. The last thing is that I create um, a learning section. And this section is divided in two. The first section is about uh, the Drupal core videos like uh, site building, teaming, and uh, module development. So if we go to the uh, site building part, there you can find the best playlist just to learn site building. Just to learn site. And you are going to see that you have so many good resources for beginners. Just that if we go there uh, for in this playlist, they have, I think, 62 videos just for beginners. But uh, you can also find some other topics uh, more precise, like, like uh, Gatsby, for example. Then you can find a lot of videos about uh, Gatsby, but also about PSP Storm and so on. And so uh, every two weeks, I'm going to add a new learning uh, topic because this site was launched uh, a month ago. So it's very new, so it's a beta one. It's not the, and I'm waiting for a beta two or three or four, I don't know. So, okay, so that's the site. And now, who is behind this site? We are only two. <laughs> so we have uh, Santiago Rico, uh, it's a graphic designer and a Drupal teamer, a very young guy, but so good, very, very, very good. And the other guy, you know who is it? Uh, and we do that at night and on weekend and uh, so on. So uh, yes, you don't have to have a huge Drupal team to make a website. So a developer and a teamer, and let's go, let's do it. So how? Did I uh, do that? I'm not going to uh, introduce each video. No, it's too time consuming. So what I'm doing, I'm connecting the Drupal 8 site directly to the YouTube API, because YouTube has an API. So I can ask for videos, I can ask for playlists, I can ask for uh, channels and so on. So I am asking those videos and I'm getting the, those videos back and I put that in my Drupal uh, uh, website. So very easy fact <laughs> to, because all the videos are on YouTube. But what did we say at the beginning? What did we say? We said that it has to be fast. We need an advanced search tool and we need a precise related content. So is that here in this solution? No, I need to add Apache Solar. And I need to add Apache Solar so I can retrieve some information from the PHP stack directly from Solar. And that's very important to have a fast website. Why? Why is that so important? And I'm going to, to give you a t-shirt. Why it's so important? Why it's so important to not to have this Apache Solar instance and to go directly to Apache Solar? What do you mean not to have an uh, instance of... I didn't understand the question, sorry. Why it's so important to have an instance of Apache Solar and not going here, for example. Why? Because uh, they have index, Lucent indexes that are made for. Yeah, they so have a Lucent index, but okay, I'm going to give you what should say? <laughs> N or L? 
L. L. That's for you. So, what is so important? Okay. All the speeches. All the speeches. Let's see another one asking, uh, responding. Okay. So he said yes. We have the Lucene uh, library behind solar. Okay, but what's what's the benefit? What would be the benefit to have performance? Performance, yes. What? L? L. Yeah. I'm yeah. Perhaps it's like me. So. Yeah. L. <laughs> L for you. Okay. It's fast. It's fast. So, but there is another reason. What's the main problem we have? With performance in Drupal. What's the main problem? Always that, oh, God, cash. The cash, and what's behind the cash? Why do we need cash? Query speed. For? The query speed. Yes, the query speed to the database. So, L or M? <laughs> um, L. Okay. Yes, the database is the main problem in Drupal. That's the main problem, so do it here. Thank you. Thank you. So the main problem is the database. That's a problem. So everything we can do without touching the database is a performance winning. So that's why. Yes, the scene is very fast, you're right. But the main reason is not touching the database. <coughs> you, you speak about cash? Who speak? You speak about it. You? So, when cash is that, in fact, it's try to try to not go to the database and to go to another layer just before the database. So, when we use solar, we have another backend. Because we are going to index all not all, but part of the data from the database to the solar instance. And we can access directly those data. And like you said, we can use memcache. So in that, in that case, if I have a warm cache, what is a warm cache? Which is up to date? Yeah. L, M. <laughs> yes, a warm cache is a cache that is updated. But what's the main problem with cache? Yes, what's the name of that? If it's not if it's not warm, it's cold, yes. M L? <laughs> okay. So the main problem with cache is that when my cache is cold. And you can, you, could you imagine a TV website with, with 200,000 news and I have to make a cold cache from that? It's quite impossible. It's very complicated to do that because I had a, a, a go down in my uh, performance and I had at the same time, 2,000 2, users trying to access that. So, cache is a very good solution. But how do I make this cache warm? That's very complicated. That's very complicated. So, there, you need solution to avoid to go to the database for warming the cache. And that's where solar comes. I can warm my cache from solar, not only for, from the database. And that's a huge uh, increase for my performance. Okay, that's the first thing I would like to share with you, that we can use solar as a view backend and to get a review directly from solar and not from the database. I'm going to, to go a little bit. Yes, but what, what? I have just a question. What's platform uh, as? Uh, platform is to surpass like uh, Pantheon, like ah. uh, Acquia. It's a path from uh, Europe. It's 
very, very good. <laughs> it's a Git-based uh, path, so it's not like this. Uh, you have to go and click there and click there and click there. Just git push, and it's it's on the on the path. Who is uh, using uh, Pentium? Uh, Pentium. Yes, you know how is that? No, it's not so. And uh, Acquia. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, th they are very good solution, but have a look at uh, performance which are very So, how did, did do? Uh, where do we use uh, solar in our website? We saw the result page and the search page, no problem. So we have the, the facets and we have the results. We also use it in the node page. Remember, we have a related content. Blah. So we use that with uh, we make it with solar, and also we have those two blocks. That the first one is the most watched uh, videos, and the other one is the latest. We use also solar with that. We said, what? How? How can we do that? So you you can see that we are not going to use solar just for search. We are going to use solar for making views. Like this, like those one, but also to make related uh, content. So, why search is so important today? I think that you know that most of the user go straight to the search bar. I know that we can have a nice navigation menu and so on, but the search is very, very important today. So, what are the current solution? Uh, for search in uh, Drupal, we have the core uh, Drupal search. It's a nice solution. It's a nice solution, but if we have a bigger website, it becomes to be slow. So we need to find another kind of solution. Um, I know that the Google search integration was was working well. So they move, they are changing their business model. I think now we have to pay for that. But we always need to wait that the data are indexed on the Google so sometimes it's a little bit tricky. And the most used solution now in the Drupal industry is the search API and the search back. So search API is just an interface to use with a search backend. What kind of search backend? We can have a database backend, the, the same database of uh, Drupal. So Drupal.org, if you uh, search for something, it's based on the database backend in Search API. So sometimes it's a little bit slow, but it's a huge amount of data. So it, it, it works pretty well. Um, the other kind of uh, search backend is Solar, of course. And the last one is Elasticsearch. It's a new one, so we have to keep an eye on it because I think that they are going to get us so, so uh, some very good solution in the near future. So, what is Apache, Apache <coughs> Solar? Okay, so we can go uh, there. It's a full text search server based on Lucene, the library. It's a Java library, and Solar is also a web. Uh, a Java web application. So, and how do do we access to Solar? That's uh, it's very nice because we can access through HTTP. We can make requests with JSON or or uh, directly to uh, to Solar, and we can have back our uh, results. Uh, it was created by Yannick Silly of CNET in uh, 2005, and he made it open source uh, in 2006. This guy is fantastic. Really, he made it. So, And now we can use it for free. That's open source. And who is using solar? The big guys. Like uh, Netflix. If you search for something in Netflix or related movie to the movie you you, you, you're watching, it's uh, Apache uh, Solar, but also Sears, Best Buy. You have some big player like, like SAP. Uh, they are using uh, Apache Solar. So Solar is not just, 
this solution for open source website. No, no, no. It's a professional solution. It's a professional solution. Don't be afraid about that. Okay. <coughs> so, <coughs> why solar? And we said because it's very fast, but we said also an an another reason. Now you, you know that. Why can we use solar? Okay, very fast for search and well else. What, what did we say at the beginning? Why can we use solar? For the electric Yes, very good. L and M. But in the other reason? It's not there. That's a problem. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. Speed? Yes, speed. But could you be more precise? What about speed? What's the benefit of using solar for speed? Yes, the query are fast, so I can decouple my backend. I can have another backend and go to this backend instead of uh, going to the database. What's uh, ML? M? Sure. Yeah, okay. Or we have a last one. It's a L. I'm sorry for the other, for the last winner. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So we can use solar, of course, because it's very fast, but also we can, because we have fa uh, facets. Uh, Search API, in fact, is going to give us the facets, so it's not uh, solar related. Uh, search, uh, result highlighting, but you complete, we saw that. Sorting and boosting. I can boost some search results if I need it in solar. The more like this is the related content. And also, I can search in binary files. I can search inside PDF, Word, Excel, and so on. And of course, I can do also some spatial uh, uh, search, so uh, from a location, for example. OK. Why is fast? And I, I think I listened the inverted index when you were speaking. Why solar is fast? It's fast because it's using the inverted index. It's a pattern in uh, database design. So when solar index document is not going to index each document in a record, what it's going to do is to index each word of the document. So in this case, you can see that the first, uh, the second word, blue, is in fact in the document one and three. So here, for example, the, the word blue is in the document one and in the document three, here and here. So if I, if I am looking for blue, I, I don't have to go in each document. Do you remember how we did it in, uh, in SQL? Like blue, and we are going to read every document to see if blue is in that document. With an inverted index, no. We just say, I, wor I want the blue word, and directly I can see in which document it's uh, appearing. That's how it's so fast. Yeah. Does that mean that every like there is a rule for every single word that is exactly exactly? So you have to uh, have like we said a corpus of words. So every word that we are using on in perhaps in only one document, you, you are going to have a record for that. So you are just looking for the words. I'm looking for blue. Okay, blue. I'm looking for, like in this example, blue and sky. So you're just looking for two words, nothing more. And if you have 200,000 documents like we have normally 
in the news or in the library and so on. So you just have to look in, in, into the words. You don't have to look into the 200,000 documents. So it's very fast. That's the inverted index. And that's how you say it is working. Any question? Any questions so far? Yes? How do you index your data? I mean, do you receive it from uh, YouTube? How do you push it to... It's, it's a normal triple node. It's a node. So I'm making first, I'm making a node. There. Uh, let's see. First, all that data goes to the database. But before going to the database, I'm making a, no a Drupal node. So it's a normal Drupal node, nothing more. And then, after creating a node, I am indexing that to Apache Solar. And that's what we are going to see that. That's what uh, Search API is. That's why we need Search API, in fact. Okay. Well, so if we speak a little bit about the performance stack, we can, you, we can see that we have the lower level of performance stack is a query cache. I think that someone mentioned that. After that, I have the, the cache engine that's there. We have mem cache and so on. I have a cache layer on PHP. Now in PHP 7, it's directly uh, available. I, I can have a reverse proxy directly with Nginx, but I can also have um, a varnish uh, uh, proxy. And I can also have CDN and cache browser. So where do solar fit in that, in that performance stack? I prefer to say that solar is just between the query cache and the cache engine. Because for me, in the cache engine layer, it's where main cache is. So solar is not there. But it's not also in the query cache. So it's between those. I know it's something, sometimes it's complicated, but it's like we are between a cache uh, for queries and a uh, memory uh, cache. So it's very important because I can now understand that I can make my views directly to Apache Solar, I can have my related content, and I can have my search directly to Solar. So how does uh, search API work? Yes, that's nice. OK, so when we use search API, we are going first to create a view. Who is using views? Yes, everybody. So you can use Search API. Don't worry. So when I use Search API first, I'm going to use a view. I'm going to build my views like every other views. It's a view. It's not, not something different. <coughs> so I'm going to make my views like always. I, I'm going to use fields. And I'm going to filter. And normally, if I am making a search, I'm going to expose my filter. So I'm going, and you can do that. You expose your filter with views. So you do the same with search API. You just expose your filter. Then, then you are going to pass through search API. And what is, in fact, views? What's the first result when I when I'm building a view. Query. Yes. We are we have one. <laughs> so one, we have one t-shirt left. So a view is only building a query. That's the main reason. So with views, what we are going to do is to send a query to search API. Search API is going to pre-process that. I'm not going to enter into, into it because sometimes it's a little bit complicated. But let's say that Search API made this query much 
faster, it, it takes some stop words off, uh, sometimes it stems that to the, to the root of the word. But, but let, let's say that search API just uh, take my query and send this query to a search backend. And in our case, the search backend is smaller, but it can be a database, it can be Elasticsearch. So, Search API, just think about it's a black box. Okay, my query is going from views to solar. And in between, I have an interface and it's search API. That's, if you can understand that, we're going to, to understand how can you use solar as a view backend. Because I am making a view. Is that correct? Is that a view? Ah, I saw, I saw people. Yes, I'm making a view, a normal view. I'm not making, I don't know, uh, something strange. I'm just going to build a view. But I'm going to make a query, like you said. But this query, I'm going to send it where? Where are they going to send my query? To? Solar. To solar, not to the database. Because normally, if I'm making a view, I'm going to send the query to the database. But in this case, I'm going to send the query to solar. And that is very useful. Why? Why it's so useful? Because it has all the content ready. Well, my, but my database, too. They have all the lab. So why it's so important to go to solar instead of my database? Of course, for the search. Yeah. Is, but is there any other reason? It's already inverted indexed. What? What did you say? It's inverted indexed. It's already inverted. Yes, indexed. but okay. It it can be fast. Okay, but there, there is a, another main reason. Yeah, solar is fast. We know that. But sometimes it can be another instance, another server, so we have some latencies. So, what's the main point here? Why do, do we want to use solar as a backend for our views? For? Well, which one? For? It's one of the fastest, but it translates. That's for search. That's for search. But there is a, another reason much more important than that. Because we don't want to hit the database? Yes! We don't want to hit the database. And that's a huge performance improvement. If I don't touch the database, my site, my site, my site is going to be fast. That's the main reason. That's why we can use solar. Of course, you are absolutely right. We can use solar for search and so on. But in this case, one, what I wanted is to have a fast website. So, I can use solar and search API to build a simple view without search filter. Yes? I just, in, like, in this example, This block, it's in the home page. Do, do I have some search uh, form or something like that? No, it's a simple block. But this block is made by search API and solar. And the advantage is that I'm not touching the database. Will you recommend using solar for every kind of no. no, no. Because it's time consuming to, to make yes. this. But to for if you're not using this block a lot of time, and if this block is not changing during the day, I'm not so sure. But if like in the news website, like, let's say latest news, it's changing all day long, or most, most uh, comment uh, news or something like that, or your homepage, yes, that's, you're going to have a huge uh, advantage. 
So normally, I try to make a simple um, estimation of request, and I try that 70% of my requests go to another place uh, that the database. You can go to the main class, you can go to Varnish, or that's, so you can go to Solar. Okay? It's okay? Question. Okay, yes? Uh, here what we see is uh, no rendering or? Without rendering. I'm going to, about the rendering, I'm going to uh, let that in the PDF in the session, for the session, okay? Because he, he's right. What is the answer of solar? What if, if I'm asking for those nodes? I'm saying, I, I would like to, to have the most watched uh, node. What's the view for that? The view is very simple. Um, sorry. Can you see the view? The only thing I have is some fields. Some filters, a content type, that the video has to be published uh, in more than a month, and a sort criteria. No? And we sort by view count. So it's a simple view, isn't it? So what is going to answer me, Solar? What is uh, it's just going to answer the, the IDs of those nodes? So if I want to have the data of solar, I have to ask it very uh, well, and I have to configure that. That is not by default. So in the, in the PDF, you are, you are going to see five steps, because I'm not a, a receipt guy. I think that receipt, you can find that everywhere. So in the PDF, you are going to have five steps uh, you have to do to be sure to have only the data from solar. And when we render it, we are going to render it only the, the data from solar. Because normally, you write, views is going to render the nodes doing a node load. We need the render array. Okay? So, solar as a view backend, we are going to use that just to avoid to hit the database. So we are going to stay here, over there. And over there, we are going to have all the reading operation. Of course, the create uh, a date and deleting operation is going to the database. I can do nothing uh, about that in solar. But the reading operation, we are going to do that for solar. In all cases, no. Only for blocks, pages, that I know that are very query consuming and there are a lot of requests uh, on this uh, box. Does it mean that uh, on the view, the when you display, ultimately it can be only fields and you cannot actually add uh, a view mode, like a teaser? No, 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 you can you have your, your view yeah. mode. Yeah. Normally, it's the best way to work. Yeah. Just to, to attach a, a view node to your, to your view. And that's what I recommend, of course. But if you have several blocks, you have to create several view modes and so on and so on and so on. But you can use the view mode for the search result. You are absolutely right. And you win the, <laughs> the last you win the last t-shirt for today. Sorry, for you, I'm not uh, today it's an L, I'm sorry guys. It's gonna be yeah? L. okay. <laughs> uh, it, he spoke about the nice point. I, I would like to to show you that someday. But uh, when you render, uh, no, when you're making a view, you can use view modes, and uh, of course, you can use that directly. So I recommend to use uh, display mode for search. But when you need facets and so on, you, you're gonna index all the fields because you, you need it for facets, you need for what to complete, and, uh, and so on. Okay? Well, any question? It was a tough uh, part, really. A lot of people said, why? Uh, I, I need to use solar as a back and how, and so on. So, any question about that? Okay, 
if you if you don't ask question, I'm going to ask. So why? Oh, you have a question? Yes, but I don't know the word in English. But yeah, I don't. You, you speak French. Yes, I can translate. Uh, what? How do you manage limitation? La limitation. Oui, le stemming. Le stemming. Uh, is there anybody know what is stemming about? No. For example, if I have playing, it's a word. I can reduce that to the word play. So if I uh, speak about players playing and so on, we are going to have only one word referring to all these other words, that the standing part. So that the porter standing we use in solving. And you don't have to configure it, nothing. You just say full text and it's done. Okay, and it works in it's from the machine. Oh, oh you have to import Yes, yeah, if, if you work with different languages, yes. you have to use the right standard for each language. Okay, so you have to You configure your schema, okay. It's a little bit more advanced, sorry. But you configure your schema dot uh, it is on the server and no, in the solar vacuum, no, not in the Drupal uh, function. Okay. What time is it? Um, 3.40. 40? 3.40. Four. Uh, the next one is at 3.40. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go... That's what you, you were asking. Okay, the receipt to, to, to index the field. Okay. Let's speak quickly about... Because you don't have any question, isn't it? No, we can we can speak about the more like this. So you you saw that we have a related content block. How we can do that with solar? In fact, and you are going to understand me because you come from the IR, so from the information retrieval, so you you're gonna understand me. So what is similarity for Apache Solar and for the scene? Similarity is based on the term frequency and inverted ter uh, document frequency in a space model. I'm going to try to explain that to you so you can go out from here to say, oh, I know what is the vector space model, I know how we can relate the content in a space uh, term uh, model. So, let's say that we have only two words in our nodes. So we have an 100 nodes, but in each node we have only two kinds of words. We have Belgium and we have Canada. So it's Canada, Canada, Belgium, Canada, Belgium, that's the nodes, okay? I'm going to, you, you're going to understand me later why I'm, not, I'm, ju I'm just working with two words. So how can, can I represent a node in a uh, two-term space? How can I represent that? I'm going to represent that based on the frequency of those words in my node. Let's say the node one, the node one, the node one has just two times Belgium and four times Canada. So I can make a vector of that. <coughs> yeah? If I have another uh, another node, the node two, this node has four times Belgium and only one time uh, Canada. So if I place there my current node, and let's say that my current node has two times Belgium and three times Canada, <coughs> what's the, the node that is similar to my current node, my current node on, on this slide? Do you want? Why? It looks closer. Yes, it's closer. That's why we use a, st uh, a vector space model to see how closer the, the, the documents are. So how can we see if something is close, closer in the vector space model? What are you, we going to use? How can you measure? No? What, what are they making together? An angle. So I'm going to calculate the cosine of the angle. 
And if this cosine is larger because it's the inverse, they are no closer. Wow, that's fantastic. So that way I can see how similar are documents, but not only for two words. I can have uh, n terms. So let's say a thousand uh, axes. You, you could, could you imagine a hundred of axes in the space? That's only words. And there I'm going to have a vector. So I can analyze all those documents in a vector space. That's how solar is working. I'm going to stop there. Just one, one small thing. That's how we cluster content. Because if in this space I find a lot of content, I can say all this content is about Canada. So I, I can cluster that. OK, I have this kind of That's content discovery. We can do that with the same technique. So Solar is using a very advanced technique to find similar content. OK? Thank you very much. I'm sorry. sorry, sorry.